Welcome to Empowering Homeschool Conversations. We are glad you are with us tonight. Um, we are continuing this month of talking about homeschool planning, scheduling, data tracking was last week, and, and all of these things that we do to try to keep our homeschool in order. <laughs> I say try. Um, <laughs> we've got kids. <laughs> we can only try so much. But um, I'm so excited tonight. Um, Emily Copeland is with us, and um, she is from Table Life Blog. And Emily, thank you for joining us and just sharing with us tonight um, from some of your wisdom. I know we, when we had talked ahead of time, you said, I've tried it all. <laughs> and you have a lot of, of experience to share with us. So, so thanks for um, joining us tonight and being um, part of this conversation as um, we continue to talk about homeschool planning. Well, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you and just to share a little bit about what I've learned over the years. Yes, yes. And that's, that's what's most important. I think that, you know, we can share what we've learned with with other homeschooling parents and that sharing of knowledge is, um, is what helps us to maybe not make as many mistakes <laughs> um, and fall in as many pitfalls. Um, but um, I think we're going to talk about tonight is that, you know, with the, the title of our um, our conversation is about homeschool planning for your family and just how different that can be based on how different your family is. And, um, and so, you know, as we get started with this conversation, I would really like our audience to get to know you better and your family so that um, we can understand a bit of your, your journey with homeschooling as well as um, what you're going to talk about with, with homeschool planning. Okay, sure. So uh, my name is Emily Copeland, and I live in eastern North Carolina, specifically on the coast. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have two kids. I have an almost 15-year-old son, and I have a nine-year-old daughter. And they both have dramatically different personalities. <laughs> that that's how it goes. It <laughs> yes. Yeah. So my son, uh, he definitely needs a plan. He's the type that he thrives with a rigid plan mm -hmm. and almost feels lost without it. So mm -hmm. that's kind of my planning dynamic with him. He's uh, at a really fun age. It's fun to kind of see who yeah. he's becoming as an adult. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this season of homeschooling for him really is, it's new to me, but it's, it's mm -hmm. a joy. I really am. I actually, I tear up thinking about it because oh. I love it so much. Mm -hmm. Um, but then my daughter, on the other hand, is my free spirit. Uh, and that's yes. always fun, mm -hmm. especially when I am so not a free spirit. <laughs> uh, I am your typical type A person. I mm. need that plan. So right. I get the pleasure of um, stepping into something new with her mm -hmm. and homeschooling a free spirit. So. Uh, yeah, she's yeah. always got something brewing in her mind, uh, something creative or inventive. Mm -hmm. And you know, there are challenges that come with keeping us on track from a homeschooling standpoint without mm. you know, squashing her creativity yes. or trying to uh -huh. tell her to put her imagination mm -hmm. aside so we can do math, you know. Right. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, there are, you know, there are struggles there. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's really interesting. They've both always been homeschooled. So this is all they've ever known. Uh -huh. But because of that, there's been a lot of learning and growing together mm -hmm. through the years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's so important. And yeah, our kids always throw us for a loop because they are not <laughs> the same. And of course, not the same as us. And all of those dynamics, as I think, is, you know, as we were preparing for this is what you're going to talk about and things yeah. that we need to take into consideration. Um, and I've got three, so so I know yeah. how that works. Um, <laughs> and how it's changed over the years of 18 years of homeschooling. Um, yeah. So we, we want our live viewers to know um, that you can join us in this conversation. If you have comments or questions that you want to include, if you are at a sticking point with your planning and kind of want us to help you, think through that um, and 
throw that in the, the comments and we'll, we'll definitely incorporate that into our conversation. And also share this. If you know somebody who's kind of floundering or maybe just getting started homeschooling or thinking about it next year, say, hey, <laughs> jump on to, on to YouTube, onto Facebook, onto Periscope. Um, we're on all three right now going live. So, um, or if you're watching recorded, definitely share it um, with someone um, so that they can take part of this um, conversation recorded too. So, um, so yeah, so let's just dive in and, and um, see what we're, we're going to talk about. So um, it's, I've checked out your blog and it seems you write about homeschool planning a lot. <laughs> yeah. And um, is this because you love planning or it's something that you needed a lot of help? Because I think that's it, we tend to come from one side or the other. It's like either I'm really good at this or I really struggled at this. this therefore, I've done all this research. So can you be one of those people who answers both because uh, you yes. struggled, you, you kind of struggled in some areas because you're really good at it. Uh -huh. uh, that's where, uh -huh. that's where it kind of meets me. Hmm. I am, you know, I mentioned I'm naturally a very type A oriented right. person. I like my plan. Mm -hmm. I like to know what's going to happen. I don't operate well without a plan. Mm -hmm. And because of that, when I started homeschooling, it was very easy to plan all the things and have every little detail worked out. Right. And over time, I realized that's not realistic, mm -hmm. uh, not for mm -hmm. my family anyway. And so right. a lot of a lot of me writing about that on the mm -hmm. blog comes from my own experiences in learning uh, what worked, what didn't work, why it didn't work, mm -hmm. and even, okay, here's what we can take that was good from this approach, but here's how we need to apply it in reality where people live and things happen. <laughs> right, exactly. <you> know? <laughs> <laughs> and that was really it. It was just kind of taking some of the things mm. that I've learned along the way. And that's mm -hmm. also why, um, like I even did a planning series and invited other bloggers to come in and share their thoughts because right. my family dynamic is going to be different from another family's dynamic. And that mm -hmm. was going to be different from another one. So I thought it was really helpful to have different perspectives, especially yes. when it comes to planning. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think that is true is we can be really good planners. It's like you can you know, be really good at organizing one thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then like everything for me, at least it's, you know, I like everything that I see organized. I can throw things into cupboards and not think about it and they can be so disorganized. But for me, that's, it's just that mm -hmm. clearance of space I need. Yeah. Um, and so, yes, we can still struggle even though we're good at something and it's little places that need refinement and yeah, we do live in a, a life where we have kids and family stuff going on yeah. in the middle of everything that we're planning. Um, yeah, I started out the same way. You know, I had the whole year planned out. You know, I'd go camping for my husband would leave me in the camper for a weekend and I would do all this, have all the books organized. And now it's like I tell my daughter, ah, just open that book. <laughs> you know, it's my last last year, next year. But, you know, it's just it's, it's changed so much over the years. And um, and so, yeah, that's but um and I'm sure things have changed for you over the years, too. Yeah. You know, can you share a story with us, of one homeschool planning high or low and what that experience taught you? So I alluded to this and it's actually pretty similar to what you just talked about with your, uh, you know, setting up in the camper. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, even uh, as far into it as, say, five or six years into homeschooling, I would get all of my resources for the next year in the mail and mm -hmm. I would just, you know, have everything all spread out. I would get my shiny new planner that oh, I yes. spent uh -huh. probably more than I needed to right. <laughs> uh, because my goodness, they had a list for everything in there. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> and it was beautiful. And, you know, it's the one to get. Mm -hmm. and I'm not knocking that, but that's just what I used to do. Right. And I would, like you said, I would plan out every detail, every subject for mm -hmm. every day for the entire year. Right. Here are the read alouds we're going to do. Here mm -hmm. are the field trips we're going to take. Here's the extra stuff we're going to do. 
And I would write that in pen. Oh. <laughs> and then three weeks into the new year, uh-huh. like your top A girl here would have to scratch through something oh, in the pretty new planner. <laughs> yes. And so internally, yes, I am freaking out because I have made my planner ugly. Right. And, uh, you know, it's one thing <laughs> to have one line through mm-hmm. one box. Right. But when you mess up that early on, you've got lines pretty much through the rest of the year. Yeah. So yep. mm-hmm. uh, I learned, uh, unfortunately, I did that more than once, but I <laughs> finally learned that's not a good idea. Right. A, you never plan in pen. Yeah. You just exactly. don't. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Pencil. 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 Yes. Pencil. Yes. Always. <laughs> um, and B, what in the world? You can't plan for a year out. You have mm-hmm. children. You are a person. <laughs> Things happen. Exactly. So, yeah, a lot of it was just finally letting it sink in that mm-hmm. I was trying to bite off too much at one time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And unfortunately, some pretty, pretty planners had to die a horrible death that way. <laughs> oh, yes. There's a graveyard. Yeah. <laughs> Those planners. But um, yeah, so yeah, I think keeping that in pencil and doing it, you know, <laughs> a little less than a year at a time is is important. And so, um, so hopefully you have some some ideas for us on on how to still keep our sanity. <laughs> yes, while, while doing some planning. So when it comes to homeschool planning, what are some of the biggest areas that trip up parents other than you know having this ideal that yeah. um, that it's going to look like this perfect planner that we see on this website that it's it's all going to be filled in and yeah. it's going to just make our life so easy. <laughs> yeah, so I would say that you've got the idea of over planning and I know that over planning could look like planning too far in advance, but I'm actually talking about planning more than is realistic for the average day yes. or the average week. Mm-hmm. And I say that because you know, things happen. We have grumpy kids sometimes. We have grumpy moms sometimes Mm -hmm. or grumpy dads sometimes. Um, You know, attitudes happen, colds happen, distractions Mm -hmm. happen. There are a thousand reasons you might not finish everything you planned in one day. Right. Well, then that rolls into the next day and then Mm -hmm. it rolls into the next day. And before you know it, you have a whole week of stuff where You just didn't get to it. You really expected more than was truly possible in your season, Mm -hmm. whether that's because you've got, you know, younger kids and they just their bandwidth is is tapped out. They're not doing any more than that. Or whether it's you personally, we can really expect too much of ourselves and too much of our kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of that, you can you can really lead to burnout. You can. You can just deal mm-hmm. with some some bad stuff that happens from that. Mm-hmm. So I see that happen a lot. And I know that I've gone through seasons where I was tempted to give into that just for the mm-hmm. sake of getting done with things. But I've had to really pull back and go, nope, that's not fair to me. It's not fair to my kids. That's not how we roll. And we don't have to do that. We do not have to uh, educate that way. Mm-hmm. So why do it? Right. So yeah. there's that. But then the opposite end of that, and I know you're saying, you know, you've got an older kid, so, mm-hmm. you know, last year, but right. you do see some people just go, I'm just not going to plan. We're just going to do the next right thing. Mm-hmm. Well, I love Emily P. Freeman and her The Next Right Thing book just as much as the next person. <laughs> but in my experience, the next right thing is not sustainable mm-hmm. in homeschooling. Mm-hmm. Uh, It can get you through a day or even a week or so if you are just off track a little bit, but Mm -hmm. eventually you don't have the accountability you need. Right. And on top of that, you're not prepared. You know, you may have supplies that were needed for a specific project or for a specific um, subject and you just don't have what you need. So then that thing Mm -hmm. gets put on the back burner and who knows when you're going to get around to it. Exactly. So, yes, it's fine if you just need it for a day or two or just for a, a limited amount of time. Mm-hmm. But I do find that under planning will eventually come back to bite you. Yes. Yeah. There there has to be some sort of 
<clears throat> standard and and I think what we've settled on is is uh this is certain days of the week and this is the subjects that you do you know and yeah and there's some sort of motivation too when they hit high school that when you finish the class you're done oh, um, yeah. <laughs> and so so that that's built in there too but um but yeah, having those supplies is so important, especially when you do a lot of hands-on types of things or science experiments and, and yeah, just knowing what you yeah. need. Yeah, well, and, and the thing is, is it's on you. Your kids can't go out and go buy the stuff. No, themselves. exactly. <laughs> yes. So if you're not going to take care of that for them, mm -hmm. then they don't have it. You know, there, there's right. just no way around it. And that's not to say that you have to completely shift the pendulum and be crazy planner, like mm -hmm. super, super obsessive. But you got to have some balance and you have to have a general plan of where you're going because yeah. everybody's going to do better if you at least have a general idea. Right. Yeah. It's like if you go shopping on Wednesday, you know, check on Tuesday what's going to be needed in the next to the next Wednesday so that yeah. you have everything in the house. I mean, it's not yeah. like you have to have, you know, this laundry list of, of shopping for the entire year set out. Yeah. So. So, yeah, definitely. But but yes, preparation is helpful. <laughs> and, it is. <laughs> but it helps our children, too, to learn that discipline of I have to be prepared too. I mm -hmm. think we're modeling that for them. So, so that's, that's important as well. I, I love that you use the word season mm -hmm. um, because it is a seasonal thing. And there's, there's some planning. I remember when my kids were younger, how I had to be more structured because they needed that. And I had to pull back as they got older because they needed to start filling in that structure more. Yeah. And, and it is a seasonal thing. And so, um, so I think that's important to point out to everyone that, you know, it, it's not just personality wise. Um, it also has to do with, um, with where, what age our kids are and um, where we're at in our homeschooling journey. So, you know, it seems like what you're saying is that copying a planning formula <laughs> that yeah. works for someone else is not the best method. Um, what do you suggest parents take into consideration when considering various planning methods or systems? There's just so many out there. Yeah. I mean, how do you even like sort through what what might work and what might not um, right at the very beginning? Yeah, so I think there's there's definitely value in taking a look at all the options if you're not overwhelmed by them. If you're overwhelmed yes. by them, then just put that aside. You can look at that all later. Mm -hmm. But I would recommend starting at, with who you are. So obviously, like what how much structure do you realistically need every day? Right. If you don't need every little detail planned out, then mm -hmm. don't plan every little detail. Just have that general game plan mm -hmm. and go with that. If you find that you need more, you can always add more. But I would say just kind of start with what your own needs are. That way you have a general idea of what you're looking for as far as the rest of it's concerned. Mm -hmm. But I would also recommend, um, you know, kind of deciphering whether or not your planning and your actual recorded plans also need to somewhat double as a record of your homeschool. That's a very you know, good point. It, yes. There are some states that require you to turn in that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. My state does not require that, but they do require that I have it available if mm -hmm. for some reason mm -hmm. I were to be audited. Okay. So yeah. if I were audited, obviously, mm -hmm. it's probably going to be a lot easier for mm -hmm. um, my audit to go well if yeah. I you know, am able to give them a nice understandable, uh, logically laid out uh, plan of what happened, what what we were doing and when, yeah. so they could get mm -hmm. the actual idea of what happened in our homeschool. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, throwing a notebook at somebody and saying, well, I wrote it down. I mean, that's okay, but that might not serve you best if you're in a state that requires yes. something a little mm -hmm. more structured. So I would consider who else might be looking at your plans. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's mm -hmm. just kind of something to keep in mind. You don't have to let it completely dictate your decisions, but it is something to be aware of. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, and then I would also say uh, your own kids. You know, I mentioned earlier that my kids are totally different. Right. Uh, my oldest does need detailed plans. He is not my do the next right thing guy. Uh -huh. um, 
because he is very disciplined, he likes having it laid out for him. He's mm-hmm. at that, that point mm-hmm. where he does do a lot of stuff on his own. He's very independent in most of his work. Mm-hmm. But because of that, and as far as transitioning kind of into that ownership that comes with right. that season of homeschooling, mm-hmm. I do still have some uh, responsibilities myself as the parent. And for mm-hmm. me with him, that is making sure he has a plan. He knows where he's going so yeah. that he can do what's asked of him and what's mm-hmm. going to keep him on track. So, um, yeah. yeah, I would say, you know, just try to find a way to honor your own kids' personalities through your planning. Yeah. Uh, I will mention for my daughter, you know, I mentioned she's my free spirit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't, I don't necessarily plan um, every day with the same rigid structure I do for my son. He Mm -hmm. needs that. Mm -hmm. She does not. What I basically do is I have a list of things that it would be nice if we got those done on Monday and we got these things done on Tuesday, Mm -hmm. but I actually leave Friday open for her because Uh I know somewhere Uh in the week, we're going to have to move something with her. (laughs) So I already have that margin day built in every single week. And that has been such a good move for her because it allows me to honor her creativity and her mm-hmm. you know, her little whim where she's learning anyway with or without my plans right. but also keep us on track that's that's a great idea yes because they can go off on a tangent and some kids are like that they are still learning i, I yeah. love that you point that out um but it just may not be in our plan and for kids that do that to squash that creativity and um, it it doesn't do them any benefit because those are the things you're going to see as they could become high schoolers that they're going to be working on and eventually you'll probably see some kind of career or, or passion come out of that. Yeah, I totally agree. And I, that's just what's helped me. And it, it probably helps that my kids are far enough apart in age to where I can mm-hmm. plan in a completely different way for them. But I do recommend if you can find a way to honor what it is each individual mm-hmm. child needs without driving yourself crazy. You know, <laughs> right. I, you know, try to do that. I understand if you have you know, considerably more children uh, in mm-hmm. this scenario that can become complicated, but it, it's right. worth trying if you can make it happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've, I've heard some parents, you know, just have the boxes and they're like, whatever mm-hmm. you want to do, this is what's for the week. Pick and choose. If you want to do all your math in one day, do it. Um, and and yeah, for some kids that that struggle, you know, just have work boxes. And yeah. the box has the task and, and that's their organization method. And um, it's just a, a note you know, they're right in their notes what the boxes are filled with. Mm-hmm. But yeah. There's and if it works, it works. Ways. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I love that. Yes. Um, personality and, and yes, and, and changing with the season, but, um, but taking a step back and looking at our kids and, and what, um, what's going to work for them is, is important. I, I think that's so important for parents to hear over and over and over yeah. again because we we get this message that you know well this is the perfect solution and try this in your school and we follow these rabbit trails you know of what other people are doing and we do the same thing with curriculum and yeah it's it's not all going to work the same for everybody and um, yeah so so that's just over and over again. We need to hear that. <laughs> I need to say it over and over again. And the more I say it, the more I'm like, okay, yes, this is what I know to be true. Stick with it, you know? Exactly. Yes, I know. And no matter how long you've been homeschooling, I, you know, I used to say, when I hit five years of homeschooling, I'm going to know everything. <laughs> and then I realized, um, no, it's just that I think people who have been homeschooling five years or longer have given in to the idea that I'll never know it all. Yes. <laughs> and we, we kind of start relaxing. There's a lot methods. of freedom that comes when you go, oh, I'll never know it all. Right. We're good. We're going to be yeah. okay. Yeah. That's so important. <laughs> <laughs> so... <clears throat> What about technology versus pen and paper? I know we a couple of weeks ago we we did a whole episode on technology and planning, but um, I know you have some favorites too. Yeah. And it seems that you use both and continue to do so. So what have you learned through experimenting with various approaches? And you know, what have you boiled down to your favorites? Okay. I'm excited to talk about this one. Yeah. So a few things here. Uh, first of all, I would say. Just because you tried this method 
three years ago and you said this isn't for me doesn't mean that you might not love it three years down the road okay so point yeah give yourself permission to go back to things and and to try again Mm -hmm. because you just don't know it's at least possible that Mm -hmm. it may serve you better later on yeah Uh, I would also say another great, great thing I've learned, and this is, this is oh, so nice. Um, just because it costs a lot of money doesn't mean it's going to be the best fit for you. Yes. Isn't yes. that nice to hear? We, That's yeah. not usually the case. Because I think we think, oh, it, it, if it costs more, we get more, mm-hmm. it's more value, it's better. Yeah. Not always. That's not to say that it might not be good. Mm -hmm. You know, some people need to have a lot of skin in the game to actually put something to use. Mm -hmm. So if you're that type of person, by all means, pay for something if that's going to make you use it. But what I have learned is, um, you know, I've, I've tried paid software subscriptions and they were wonderful um homeschool planet that's an amazing software hmm. planning system it is phenomenal i have nothing bad to say about that um but we tried it and loved it and then we just decided okay well let, let's we might come back to that it was hmm. really good i think we'll go back to it but I took a break from it and hmm. just kind of went back to paper and pen for a little while and uh, you know tried to find the perfect planner again, oh, the know. perfect pen and paper yeah. planner. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, there was a time when I ended up with just a little cheap notebook and mm-hmm. I just wrote down, hey, here's what we're going to do on Monday. Here's Tuesday. Here's Wednesday. And I would write the week the date mm-hmm. up in the corner. And that was okay too for a while. Uh-huh. But eventually I decided, you know what? I've got a teenager that needs the plans too. He needs mm-hmm. to have those plans just as much as I need them. And I'm tired of making a second copy. Or, you right, know, hey, exactly. Uh-huh. I'm over that. <laughs> and so uh, for whatever reason, instead of going back to Homeschool Planet, where I knew I could, you know, log him into that as well, mm-hmm. um, I decided, you know what, why don't I try Trello? I think I'm going to see if I can just make my own thing that works for us. Hmm. And so I just, you know, hopped on that free Trello app because I mm-hmm. had used similar apps for work before and I just kind of started messing around with it and trying to envision how that could work for us and it turns out that that free app that I've never paid a dollar for Mm -hmm. is the best solution for us in this season. I'm able to customize it however I need it to be uh, customized. I, I have him, he's got complete access to his He can go in and check off what I've assigned. He can access any attachments that I need to to give him to complete an assignment. He can ask questions. He can comment on things. He's got it at his fingertips. I've got it at my fingertips, you know, real time. Right. That has been such a good fit for us. So I just make a board for him every month. And then I have a board for my daughter also. And the great thing about that is I can download that as a PDF at the end of the month. Oh, wow. And you know, then I've got my records. So, right. I mean, that's really, really helpful. And it turns mm-hmm. out it was free. So yeah. why not? Exactly. Yeah. Our, our guest a couple weeks ago talked about Trello and um, just showed us because she teaches a, like a co-op class and she showed how she organized it there. But um, this is a whole new different way now that you're yeah. talking to us about this. And it seems like it has a lot of possibilities. It's a project management tool, isn't it? Pretty it much? is. And so whatever you use, obviously, it doesn't have to be that specific one. But don't be afraid to think outside the box. For, right. and because there are so many project management tools or just mm-hmm. things that are made for work groups or whatever, mm-hmm. there's so much available now and a lot of it is free when you're exactly. dealing with smaller teams and mm-hmm. so your family would be a smaller team. Right. There's a lot out there and you might be able to uh, come up with something that really works better for you than anything you would have gone and paid for. It's at least worth trying. If you yeah. try it for a month and decide it didn't work out, you've only lost a month of your time you've not lost you know any kind of financial investment so and I think too when you you use that you rethink that whole planning process and so you're you're rethinking what you're doing so it's going to benefit you in the end anyways every time you try something new because it seems like you know through your journey of planning you've learned something as you've tried different things and then you've applied it to that next step 
of what you're doing now. Um, yeah. And and that'll be applied then, you know, with whatever you do next. Um, Absolutely. And so so it's it's not a waste of time, definitely. And and really, you have your records. You created them on whatever you create them. They don't have to be identical. I, I think for, for type A people like us, <laughs> you know, to have every year just identical that, you know, it might, we might make us cringe a little bit that it's not, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but that's okay. You know, you have the records for what they're for and, exactly. and it's um, just to, to have a record and to be able to report if your state requires that. And, um, that's really all it is. I'm, so yeah, that's, that's important. And um, yeah, and so you've got um, a couple different resources on your website and Trello, you have one whole blog written about that. Um, yes. If you happen to be watching on the, the our YouTube channel, just know that Emily shared those links with me ahead of time and I put them in the description. So they're on the YouTube description. They aren't on Facebook or um, the podcast it will come out on Sunday. And of course, you'll have to go back to the YouTube channel. They just don't have enough in the description. Yeah. For that. Yeah. But, um, but just know that that's where you can you can find those links or you can just go to I'm sure you can just go to your website and search yeah. planning and find everything. Yeah. There. And I will mention um, on that Trello post, uh, because I do use it in a way that seems to be a little different for our, uh, from how a lot of people use it. Mm -hmm. I made um, like a template board that anyone can join that board and I've got instructions set up on the board to how to copy it and customize it for your own personal use. So that is free and it's available. You just have to go to that post and check it out. Um, but anyway, that's there if you just kind of need help envisioning how to use that specific resource that way. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you've got a lot of really great resources. I, I want to give our viewers a chance to, to join this conversation if you have any questions or comments, because I know we have some people watching and um, want to make that opportunity available to you. But um, so while they're thinking about that, <laughs> I would love for you to um, to share just a little bit about your blog and what people can find on there other than planning too. Um, yeah. If you're listening to the podcast, you don't see what's on the screen, but it's tablelifeblog.com yes. and and so um so yeah tell us okay so obviously i have a uh lots about planning but i share a lot of book lists because we are a literature based homeschool family okay. so i share a lot of reading lists of mm -hmm. you know that are topically organized so you'll see those there uh, i share a lot also about uh, art ideas and specific mm -hmm. activities and uh, just resources that have helped us so you'll find a lot about art there uh, in general just tips and you know tricks i've learned along the way things yeah. that have worked there's, you know, there's also encouragement because we all need mm, some of that sometimes. Exactly. But, yep. but yeah, the bulk of what you'll find will be, you know, resources that have helped us homeschool well, uh, whether that means product reviews or even, like I said, if that's just, hey, here's, we were studying this topic and here's mm -hmm. what really helped us uh, get a great grasp on that. So I've got, you know, unit study resources, things like that. Awesome. But yeah, just, there's kind of just a hodgepodge of things that have helped us along the way. And then, mm -hmm. um, encouragement to help you uh, keep going. Great. Yeah, there's lots of great resources. And you also have uh, a downloadable planner page? I, I do. Yeah, they're, uh, they're planning worksheets. I didn't want to call okay. it like a straight up planner because mm -hmm. I wasn't aiming for a planner. Mm -hmm. uh, but because I mainly use Trello, I know that for myself, I needed something that just kind of helped me map out what my month ahead would look like and right. then what the individual weeks would look like. And I found that I didn't really see that available to me. So I made mm. my own thing that kind of helped me work within the, um, the framework that I needed. Yeah. I figured I can't be the only one out there that kind <laughs> of needs, like you need a map, but you mm -hmm. don't necessarily need to know where every stop along the way is going to be. You just right. need to know where you're starting out, where you need mm -hmm. to end up. So it kind of helps you map out some of your high points along the way each month and each week. Yeah. without being super duper detailed. So mm -hmm. those planning mm -hmm. worksheets are available there and they're easy to find also. Awesome. Yeah. And they're available for free. I've got two different designs there. Just, and they're pretty you know, too. You've given yeah. you got <laughs> 
I couldn't decide how I wanted them to look, so I just did two different versions. That's good. Yep, yeah, because there's different personalities. So yeah. you know. <laughs> and you didn't know which day you asked me which one I prefer. So I don't know. <laughs> Well, that's nice. Yeah, it's, you know, you, you create these things for yourself and then then just share them. And I, I and when I got onto your, your website, I have to say the first thing I said is this lady's a teacher, um, you know, because <laughs> you, you just come off as this, you just get this vibe that that um, that you just love homeschooling. And, I do. I do. And it's um, it's become your your family's environment, you know, and. Yeah, I love that you say that because that that's one thing if I had to just really sum it up, it's our experience. It's kind of who we are as a family. We mm -hmm. just kind of do our thing. We're learning together, growing together. And I'm so grateful that, you know, we get to do that, that it's just yeah. part of who we are. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I love that we're able to model that learning doesn't stop just because you graduated college or you graduated yes. high school or whatever, that mm -hmm. we're all learning and we're all still growing and that it's just kind of part of the family culture there. Yeah, yeah. And it's good for our kids to see us doing that, too. And so, you know, just coming back around to this whole planning thing for our kids to know that we still struggle and we sure. we're still, you know, learning through this process. And, well, mom's trying out something new. <laughs> you know, let's try out this Trello thing <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. and to bring it up to them and just, you know, as an experiment. It's a learning thing for all of us. And let's try it out together. Um, I think that's a good way to approach it. And um, we want to raise lifelong learners. We do. And, and so that that process of of learning along with our children, we may be learning technology or, you know, other things too, but we're, we're also learning the subjects with them as well. <laughs> sure. And, and yeah, you can still be interested in all of that. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't have any, uh, you know, academic motivation uh, to be interested, it, it's right. just, it's a big world and there are so many interconnected things mm -hmm. and it's, it's really fun to continue exploring all of that with them. Yes. Yeah, it is. Well, I thank you for the work that you do and, and just everything that um, you share with other parents because I, I know you are an encouragement to many. So, um, and oh, just, I'm so glad to be able to. Yeah, and thank you for sharing with our audience. Um, thank you, viewers, for, for joining yeah. us tonight. Um, we didn't have any comments or questions, but um, I'm going to share with you a few things that we have going on at SPED Homeschool. Um, just so that you know what's going on around here. Um, we've just launched the Empowered Homeschool Network. Um, it's a brand new, different website. It's at empoweredhomeschool.org. But um, we have started just this month offering webinars um, that are pinpointed. Two of our team members are teaching those. One is on how to homeschool your struggling learner. The other one is how to homeschool your struggling learner through high school. And um, last night, um, Dawn did her first webinar on how to creatively change up your curriculum to teach your struggling learner. And both of the ladies that teach these classes are ex-special ed teachers that now homeschool and they are brilliant. Um, so, so definitely check out empoweredhomeschool.org. You can also find it on our, our homepage at spedhomeschool.com. You can find the link to that. Um, but, but those webinars will continue on a monthly basis. And then starting in May, we are launching a masterclass on how to homeschool high school for a struggling learner. It's something we've been working on for actually a year and a half. <laughs> um, but it's a compilation from HSLDA and and Seven Sisters Homeschool and Sped Homeschool and some other of our partners and we've written a 20 module uh, master class that will give you lots and lots of resources for homeschooling high school so that'll be coming out soon and then our partners are gonna start launching their own courses and master classes on there as well so it's gonna be like this learning platform for parents super super excited for that that sounds out. great it, yes it's been it's been in the works and also we'll be have membership groups so you can actually join conversations with parents and be part of that with our partners or our team. So, okay. I'm looking forward so, to that. Yeah. I know everybody else is too. I know. And we also just launched our review crew. So we are doing unboxings and reviews of some of our partners. Um, actually my unboxing of Knotgrass Histories um, economics course for high school 
just launched today, but we have some other ones on there and we're going to be doing a whole bunch of knotgrass histories, um, all their different levels, um, coming up this month. So, um, <clears throat> Lots of different things going on with that. And also you can join our review crew. Um, so there's an application for that in all those videos on our YouTube channel. And last of all, um, just subscribing to our newsletter that comes out, our YouTube channel, our podcast channel, all of that is, is constantly being filled. I think we have four new videos that go up to our... So what Emily and I talked about tonight, next week is going to turn... Not, not only will you see this full video, but you'll see four shorter segments next week as well. So we re-release that. And um, then Sunday, the podcast will come out. So I know we, we have a lot of people that watch for that because I see all these downloads happen <laughs> right after we release that um, podcast on Sunday. So um, so all those things going on also at Sped Home School. And we're excited that we're going to be starting on the road, going to homeschool conferences again. We want to see you in person. <laughs> so I'll be in Iowa, Texas, and... Um, Arizona already so I'm excited about that but um, yeah there's a lot of things coming up and we're really excited about that and um, do you got anything coming up Emily I don't I'm still laying low here well that's that's good too I, <laughs> I'm kind of envious <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting to be fully vaccinated before I throw myself out there oh, okay yeah <laughs> Yep. <laughs> it's, it's a process. So just, yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you all for joining us. Um, next week, we're going to keep talking about planning. Um, <clears throat> we've got one more guest on this subject as we, um, we have five weeks this month. So, um, Jennifer Dodrill is going to join us and she's going to talk about homeschool planning made easy. So um, we're going to see what she has to say too. And is like you've learned from Emily is, is that there's so many approaches out there and we want to give you just blanket you with them because not just one method is going to work and it'd be the perfect answer. So, um, so thank you, Emily, for um, sharing with us and um, taking time out of your schedule and just all the wisdom that you had to share with us tonight. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm so grateful to have been here tonight. Yeah, this was awesome. So, um, we've got, oh, Amy says thank you. But you are welcome, <laughs> Amy. Glad to have you with us. So, um, so yeah, we'll see you again next week, right here, same time, same place, and for the next um, episode of Empowering Homeschool Conversations. Good night, everyone. A powerful prayer life does not require hiking a mountain to be able to hear from God. God can meet us right in the middle of our busy lives to help, guide, and speak to us through prayer. I'm Christina Patterson, host of the Teach Us to Pray podcast, providing practical teaching and encouragement on how you can make prayer a natural and consistent part of your everyday life. I promise it won't require hiking a mountain, but you just might develop the faith to move one. Listen and subscribe at lifeaudio.com.